Welcome to the Current Case Podcast. We're a group of four friends discussing the latest current events as they apply to our everyday lives. From foreign policy to local events, we cover it all as best we can in a manner not restrained by the bias of the big media corporations. We might not always agree with each other on certain topics, but that's what makes it all the more interesting. Being able to sit down and have a civil conversation on even the most controversial topics is a necessity for a better society. What's up, fellas? Welcome back to another episode of the Current Case Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 9. Today is June 7th, 2023. Let's get into it. You talk so fast. <laughs> I got places to be, dude. I got shit to do. Time is money. Cameron is on track right now. I know. I I wish. Wish. I gotta, I gotta no, find some mugs. good. I gotta find some good coke to get addicted yeah. to. See, Cameron, this is what happens when you wake up on time because you talk really fast and then you just plow through everything and you're like, wow. So slow. I actually down. woke up at like one o'clock today. <laughs> Jeez. You ever consider getting a job as like one of those speed talkers in those radio ads <laughs> at the end of it where you have to apply that little caveat to whatever fancy ad they're making? Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun, I think. You're not even drinking mugs, Rupert. You're drinking bars. Yeah, bars is awesome. Mug shit. fucking sucks. You fucking suck. All right. Okay. Well, welcome back, guys. Season 3, Episode 9. As always, make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. Bell icon to be notified. Leave comments, and of course, uh, Patreon. Uh, make sure if you donate, if you are ever so generous to do that. Uh, we need a microphone, and we can't afford a microphone, so if we don't get Patreon donors, this microphone is gone. Sorry, we'll have to use my laptop mic next if we don't get Patreon donors. So, please consider donating. Um, also, our Discord server is open for anybody to join in. Link will be in all the descriptions we have. So make sure you check that out. We'll post it on Instagram. It's on the YouTube channel already. So just feel free to join in if you want to hang out on Instagram and do what Instagram, hang out on Discord and do whatever. Last thing we have kind of a new format change today and going forward, kind of discussed last week. Uh, we want to make some changes as we get halfway through this season. So we're going to kind of shorten things up in terms of more current event news unless there's something giant happening um and we're going to kind of explore other things for this episode so please let us know what you think of these format changes i'll leave a poll open um on youtube and on spotify as well if you like this type of format uh please vote you want to keep this or if you want us to scope with the usual that we've been doing these past couple of episodes uh let us know as well and with that being said we're going to go ahead and get into it uh first of all if you look outside we live in ohio by the way it's fucking smoky as hell right now lots of haze he's going around right like if you because it's supposed to be a crystal like clear blue day right now and the sky is completely covered and this is all from canada those fuckers sent down their smoke to us there's but seriously there's a some large canadian wildfires that are burning right now and now the fumes are coming down to us it's actually affecting our air quality like the first time i've seen air quality warnings being issued and i know new york philadelphia cities on the east coast especially are under pretty severe a pretty severe effect from this yeah i think new york's had their hot, lowest air quality since like 1960 yeah mm -hmm. it's absolutely insane yeah yeah matt's showing us the picture now we'll try to post it it's where is that at matthew uh the george washington bridge in new york city you can only see like the first pillar of it so maybe like 400 feet yeah it must be at sunset because it's like all it's like the breaking bad mexico feet a uh, filter it's like all orange and yellow <laughs> you can't see shit i mean it makes the sunset like we don't have it as bad here obviously but it makes the sunset so it's look nicer but at the same time it's uh it's it's a telling situation because we're not even really that we're not we haven't even officially started summer yet and there's already pretty major wildfires burning and here in our area ourselves we haven't had like any rain at all like we had yeah, some, most yeah. of my grass is dead. Yeah, That's like everybody's great. grass is dead. <laughs> yeah, I think we only got like a less than an hour of rain last night. Right. So yeah, we barely had a couple. Like it wasn't that, I mean, it was hard, but it wasn't that long at all. And we're not supposed to get rain again until maybe Sunday. And of course that may change too, because it's only like 40, 50 right now, which is kind of low. And mm. it's hard to predict weather that far out too. So who knows? We need, we need consistent rain. Maybe it'll change on Sunday, but... Right now we are definitely dry. I think based on the wildfires in the area, it's definitely we aren't the only ones who are in a pretty dry spout right now. Yeah, it's also kind of unusual with the way the winds have been blowing recently. Ordinarily they go from west to east and also kind of like a south to north ish. Mm -hmm. Right now it seems they're coming from completely the opposite direction. 
at least here, and that's probably where we're getting all this haze and poor quality air. Right. I mean, have you guys smelled smoke at all? I've been hearing people saying, like, in the Dayton subreddit, mm -hmm. they smell, like, a smoky, like, campfire-ish smell. Yeah, so I've been out riding my motorcycle, and, like, smell my hand. Where does that is? Like, kind of like, you can, like, my shirt, you can smell, like, the faint, like, Yeah, it's a faint smoke. smell. Yeah. I definitely noticed it too, today. Yeah, I also kind of noticed it when I opened up my window mm -hmm. this afternoon to get some circulation going, the air out my room, and definitely smell a little off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's like a, it's not like major, but it's definitely there. It's like a slight hint. I, I noticed it today too. I haven't noticed it the past couple of days, but I guess maybe now I'm aware of it. I might pick it out a little bit more. So it's there. Again, I it's probably all goes back to the big climate change, which I'm still waiting to get Alec on here to really talk about this. This is, of course, a giant issue, which will probably be a deep discussion on, but I really want him on before I even bring this up. However, it is kind of telling this far close into the year or this early into summer and we're already experiencing these issues and we're dealing with Canada's shit right now, basically. And here I thought rampant wildfires were a California thing. Right. In California, people are like, first time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to shift out of that. Um, last thing we want to cover news-wise is pretty big incident happened yesterday. Was the day before. I think that's actually the day yesterday. Before. Day before. Um, with a giant explosion in uh, the Nova Karhovka. Is that Kar Nova Karhovka? No, Nova Karhovka, damn. So, Ash, you want to explain what happened and we'll discuss why the Russians fucking did this in the first place. Ah, uh, yes. So, the Nova Karhovka Dam is located along the, uh, the Dnipro River, which bisects New the country of Ukraine. Right. <clears throat> Ever since the Russians withdrew from Kherson last, last year in November, that's kind of been like the front line for that sort of sec for kind of like the southern sector mm -hmm. because <clears throat> with the Ukrainians having pushed the Russians back, there's no way the Russians can push back across the river to continue to renew their offensive. But at the same time, Ukraine is still building up for their major counteroffensive, and I don't know how many landing craft they have, but I don't think they have enough to like make a major counteroffensive across the Dnipro. But apparently. Over the past couple of weeks, the reservoir behind the Novokohovka Dam was being filled up to the brim. And a couple of days ago, the Russians actually blew it up and decided to flood the area uh, to the uh, <clears throat> south, <clears throat> to the south of the dam. And they, and of course, I know there's warnings about this that if the Russians were to do this, it would be absolutely devastating, a big ecological disaster. And now they've done it. And the big question is, why would they do this? Well, I think they've actually had this plan to do ever since October. I've heard reports that they rigged the dam with explosives. But I think the reason why they're trying to do this now is because, for one, I actually remember a couple months ago, some Ukrainian S Special Forces Brigades managed to establish a small camp or bridgehead on, on the other side of the river, and the Russians have struggled to kind of dislodge them. Yep. And they use artillery and airstrikes, as well as local counterattacks, but to no effect. Hmm. But the ironic thing is, by flooding the whole area, the Russians have shot themselves in the foot there because <clears throat> on the Russians' controlled side of the river, that's actually the low ground. Ukrainians still have the high ground and are relatively safe, at least on, on the Kherson side. Yeah, they really did. And to make matters even worse, like I've seen reports of them, uh, of course, they purposely filled up the dam before they, they, before they, of course, let it go boom. Yeah, that's what I said before. They didn't, oh yeah. I didn't catch that. And then there was actually a zoo in that region too. They didn't even bother to evacuate the animals. Um, so all wildlife in the area got absolutely destroyed. And I've heard that uh, they're essentially shooting at people trying to evacuate the region. Even her, yeah, even reports of them shooting at rescuers. Fucking barbarians. It's it, it is yeah. It's a disaster right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Another war crime to add to their giant list. Yes. But when I saw this, I was like, Russia has to pay. Yeah. The only other thing I can think of to justify this action was they were probably thinking that Ukraine's imminent counteroffensive might be going through that area. But like I said, I don't think Ukraine has that many landing craft to affect like a massive cross-river assault. Not to mention the bridgeheads would be vulnerable to artillery and airstrikes. Right. <clears throat> I would... Mm, Many people have speculated where Ukraine's gonna mm, launch its counter-effect. That thing's been done to death half at this point. Mm -hmm. But I think, mm, but I think across the Dnipro River, no, across the Dnipro River operations, unlikely. I agree. I just don't see it coming from that region. 
and they fucked up. <laughs> yeah. They screwed up majorly. It's horrible what's going to happen, of course. Did you mention, not sure if I missed this or not, did you mention the nuclear power plant as well? Uh, not yet during our recording session, but yeah. Upriver of the reservoir where the dam was located, there is actually uh, <coughs> Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm which the Russians captured early on in this war, after shelling it, mind you, and later turning it into an ammunition storage warehouse. But uh, that, that nuclear power plant's coolant relies on water from the Dnipro River, and specifically from, from the reservoir that's been starting to drain because of the uh, destruction of the Novokohovka Dam. There's, um, there's the risk that if they, that plant doesn't get enough coolant water, it could trigger a meltdown, and then we'll have Chernobyl 2.0 to, to top this whole thing off. Even worse than Chernobyl, because that, I know that plant's a lot bigger, too. Yes, it's Europe's biggest nuclear power plant. It, it's absolutely, like I said, disgusting. I, I mean, I'm, I'm even surprised Russia did this, though. At this point, the only thing that surprises me is how stupid they continue to be with this. They fuck up after fuck up. <laughs> It just goes on and on, and of course, what they what they warned about came true. We'll see. Unfortunately, hearts go out to the, those affected by it, and of course, this the uh, innocent wildlife that was wiped away too from this. All right. Well, with that being said, um, I think we're ready to kind of start our new new segments, new ideas that we had in mind. So, Matthew, you want to go ahead and kick things off here? <clears throat> All right. So, for the audience listening, we we're attempting something new. And in addition to our life advice segment, we're going to go through and just talk. You know, like that's been something that has sorely been lacking on the podcast thus far. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. Cameron? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was for sure, man. Well, I, I agree. Yeah. Well, what? What are you agreeing absolutely. with? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. But anyways. All right. What do you want us to talk about? What's on I, your mind? I think I've got an idea of what's what to talk about. What's, what's been going on? What's been going on recently between us? What's been happening in our day to day lives? Anything interesting? Oh, yeah. Funny stories or? I've been flaming Cameron, being sick of his shit. <laughs> you better watch it, dude. I'll, I'll burst you. And if you subscribe to our Patreon, we'll do a boxing <laughs> boxing match, and I'll take on the winner. <laughs> Permission to take the role of referee? Sure. There you go. All right. Um, so, Ashton, what's happening? Anything eventful? Uh, nothing too uh, too much on my end. Mostly, it's just mm, <clears throat> me playing mm, playing DCS, mm, doing mm, doing some things. Main thing that's going on for me right right now is that in a couple of days I'm going to be going off to uh, Florida for from the 9th until the 18th mm -hmm. for vacation. So, sadly, I won't be able to join you guys for. Next week, be solely missed. Well, hope you enjoy. Uh, yeah. Hope you enjoy vacation, though. Yep. Hopefully, we'll get. I'll get to spend some time at the beach as well as get to see a rocket launch. Oh, oh nice! Wait, what rocket? Um, I think um, it's mainly my dad who wants to uh, watch um, specifically watch a SpaceX launch going on. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Good to see one of Elon Musk's wet dreams again. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I know we have. The Tesla yesterday was something else. What happened? I'm oh, just looking. Oh, uh, wait, was it yesterday? I'm losing track of the dates. It was yesterday, right? Yeah. The Tesla, that thing is just saying that thing is something else. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm, sitting in vicious Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's good. Well, hopefully, again, you enjoy vacation. Uh, my parents are going on vacation this week. I got to stay behind. Um, have they didn't invite you again? No. Nah. Something like that. We have, we have to work at summer school. Um, I mean, it's good anyways because got to take care of Ivory, my dog. So, it's, and kennel costs are like way too expensive anyway. So, fuck that. So, I get to do it for, well, they'll pay me some money, but doing it for free. From the bottom of my heart. Yeah, well, they are your parents after all. Exactly. And then also, I do want to say it with Discord. Uh, if you do join in, we always invite you to come on to the Hangout voice channel that we have. Um, so if you ever want to like just type whatever the fuck you want during our podcast, uh, just say hi. Feel free to check into the Hangout section. Um, we have different channels as well where we bring stuff up, so feel free to join in. Again, those links will be on YouTube or stuff like that. You'll see them, so come on in. 
I have Grace in the Hangouts section right now. She's my girlfriend, so Grace, if you want to type something, say hi. Uh, just know that you're there. Yeah, we're really trying to drive engagement here yeah. with you guys because we care about our fans and we want to hear more from you. So we figured what better way than to create a Discord channel mm -hmm. where you can interact one on one with us. All right, Matthew, what else? Anything on your mind? Yeah, um, I think everyone as a grown adult needs to A, have friends, and B, have some sort of passion project that they're working on. All right, what's your passion project? Well, first, I want to talk about Jared. So, you've had a couple within yeah. the past few years, haven't you? Yeah, I have. The problem is when I start one, it's hard to finish because, like, I get into this spark where it's like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, and, like, after a month, it starts, like, fizzling out, and then from there, I just kind of abandoned it. So, I like, in order for me to get back, I have to find, like, a spark again. Like, I have a Rocket League, like, even, like, something like video games where I have, like, a Rocket League phase where I'm just really into it, and then it just dies out. It's like Pokemon Go, same thing. I'm, like, really into whatever, and then it just dies and like that's why I kind of struggle with at the moment. So like previously, I know you were working on a couple of different books, right? Yep, I was one fantasy fiction book, another historical book. Um, they're kind of I've worked on a video game in the past. I have another passion project. So I always get ideas, but I never able to finish them. I guess. So what was your video game idea? Uh, I mean, looking back, it wasn't that great. But it was a survival game, like the old Rust. You know, Rust is, it's a survival type game based building. Um, there's a legacy version of that game, which I thought was a lot more fun than the new version that's out now. So it's kind of based in like Africa. There's not a lot of African survival games. It's kind of similar to our survival. Yeah, probably because um, I remember one time when one video game was set in Africa, and it got mm, caught. Mm, most journalists started playing the racist card at uh -huh. it simply because it was set in Africa and you were killing basically African zombies. <sighs> oh. <laughs> It wouldn't have been zombies, those are just animals, just the stereotypical. Lions, Af cheetahs, and leopards. Yeah, it's shit like that, and to survive the savanna, basically. Mm -hmm. There would have been, like, stage clans or stage areas, villages. Mm -hmm. Probably would have been flagged as racist or something, who knows. <laughs> Oh, it's hard to mm, it's hard to please journalists these days, especially when they don't have any real basis in reality. True. <laughs> Very true. But to answer your question, Ashton, um, right now, just kind of the podcast. That's true for everyone right here. Mm. I would say this has probably been our longest passion passion project, um, keeping this thing going. I mean, we're, what, 26, 27 episodes in by now? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been going. Um, we've at least been seeing growth. Uh, again, we want to expand Discord. We want to kind of have a more larger outreach as well. So it's kind of our end goal with this, I would say. Yeah, to think this kind of served all as an impromptu idea over dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can hear the story in the, our first episode that we did at Longhorn Steakhouse, just chatting about whatever topic. I know it's something of Russia and Ukraine. It's what we were talking about. Yeah, it's kind of hard to ignore it. Mm, big ticket items since it's literally the biggest conflict in Europe since the Second World War. Cameron, were you there when we got $20 from some woman? And Ashley, you remember at like Chewy's? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Matthew, were you there? Hi, welcome think... to Chili's. <laughs> that was Chewy's. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like some woman came up to us. Um, <laughs> we were talking about something. I think it was China. <laughs> yeah. But she was like, I just like hearing young men talk about issues in the world. <laughs> and she gave us $20. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say, oh, we'll listen to her podcast. Oh, we didn't have it at the time. Oh, I see. It was before it. Yeah. Well, shit, she's made us 20 times more than what we've made right now with this. True. Yeah. Come on, guys, step up. Jesus. Yeah. I think, she, mm, I, if I recall correctly, her words were more so being honest about mm, what we think mm. of certain things, not afraid to state our opinions, something along those lines. It's been a while. Yes. So Cameron, besides skateboarding, because it's not really you building anything besides your skateboard, it's more of a hobby. <laughs> yeah. What's your passion project? Um, right now I'm working on overhauling my fantasy world that I created. So like, you know, I'm really into like tabletop video, or not, not video games, uh, cut that, what, what. <laughs> Start that over. Not kind of shit. On, like mm, tabletop games. Yeah. I, I'm really into like tabletop role playing games, like uh, Pathfinder and Dunge play, Dungeons right? and Dragons. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I've been trying to like craft a fantasy world um, that I can use in campaigns for these role playing games. And you know, I had started on one, and I kind of realized it was like not that great. Like really, I was just taking real life cultures and countries 
putting a different name on them and throwing fantasy races into it and calling it a day. And there's really no point in that, right? If you're not really like making anything new, it's like you can just set your game on Earth and just say there's fantasy races, you know? So now I'm trying to like make something more unique, kind of mm -hmm. with its own identity and just overhaul the whole thing from scratch. And so far, I think it's going like pretty well, like better than it was before. That's for sure. So that's all I'm really working on right now. Nice. Skateboarding and tabletop games. I've always wanted to run a campaign. Yeah, we should sometime. Bring, mm -hmm. bring the set. Yeah. yeah. As soon as I get done crafting the setting, we can choose a game system and run it. See, I, I love like fantasy games. Um, I mean, I like fantasy games. Fantasy worlds can be fun. I like creating governments and running empires. So, <laughs> like Dungeons and Dragons, you can do that, right? Uh, depends. I mean, like, there are some instances that would probably allow you to be in the empire business, I would say. Oh, yeah. Like, there's this perfect system I want to create. I saw this Minecraft video um, a couple of days ago. Let me look up that guy's name really quickly. I always recommend, even if you don't play Minecraft, I do recommend checking it out. 1,000 people, what was the dude's name? I'll cut this crap. Uh, Ish. He's a pretty well-known, at least Minecraft YouTuber. Um, he put 1,000 people into one server and split them up into four different islands. One was a desert island, one was a savant, or one was a plains jungle, and then there was a snow island, and he divided it equally, so it's like 250 on each island, and then from there they kind of just let them do what they want. Uh, and you got to see people's pretty cool like you got to see like humanity in a game like you got to see civilizations form people formed uh empires like the snow became a giant dictatorship basically and the desert also became a dictatorship and democracies formed in the other two and eventually they kind of allied and turned against the snow empire and went to a big war with each other so i thought that was pretty fun i'd love to do something like that Hmm. Yeah, that might be an interesting thing to try out. There's got to be games like that, I wonder. Age of Empires, that's an RTS, kind of an RTS game, but mm -hmm. oldie but a goodie, I will say. No, there's, what's it, Civilization, isn't that what that game's called? Yeah, Civilization. I want probably want to get that soon. Yeah, be ready. <laughs> I hear it's quite addictive, though. Hell, I'll, I'd probably play that all night if I were to get it. I think it's like a full price game, but... Well, keep an eye on Steam for any sales. Summer sale, that's got to start soon, right? Yeah, almost time, I think. Okay, so we'll have to, I'll have to get that, because I've been dying to do that sometime soon. Running an empire seems like fun. I have my own ideas. Anything else? I'm I don't, mm, not sure if he asked me if mm, I was planning on doing anything. Oh yeah, Ashton, do you have any passion projects at the moment? Well, I've got a, mm, a couple ideas mm, for things going on. Mm -hmm. Kind of mainly related to some mm -hmm, gaming things that I do in my free time. I mean, my biggest project right now is actually becoming a fully qualified pilot and whatnot. But aside from that, main things for me are uh, saving up enough money to get a VR set, looking at the Valve Index. I'm getting there. It'll still be a little ways before I can get that, mainly so I can actually try out Half-Life Alex. Yeah. And I think, I'm thinking kind of another project I was thinking about looking on related is kind of related to a... DCS, Digital Combat Simulator. It's a flight simulator that Matt and I, pl Matt, I guess, used to play. I haven't seen him play in a little while. But uh, I was kind of looking into trying to make my own sort of like camp air war campaign in DCS. Mm -hmm. Because whenever Matt and I played, I'd usually set up some missions for us to tackle. And uh, I was kind of looking into some to try and get some more advanced stuff in, like setting up triggered events and trying to basically create like a whole like dynamic campaign or whatnot based off of certain hypothetical or real scenarios. Yeah. So I might try and do that sometime in the future. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I guess if you wanted to tie in, if you want to what you were planning on doing, if you wanted to kind of set up the government, like the sort of politics and governments or whatnot of this fictional mm -hmm. scenario, I could do like the tactical, operational, and strategic sort of aspects of a hypothetical conflict or flashpoint. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty awesome to do. About six. <laughs> if anyone listening knows how to create a video game, get in touch with us. That would be a nice project for us to take on, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Well, what's your ideas for a video game? Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Still, it's just like in the, like, barely, barely start of thinking about it. So, but if anyone knows Unity, Unreal Engine, uh, coding, hit us up. You'll have to pay them. Yeah, I guess we'll have to start start up like a GoFundMe then. <laughs> GoFundMe. Yeah, if we have, if we finally, if we finalize the ideas of our little project. Mm -hmm. well, it has to be something that 
like video game wise, it's always gotta be something that really stands out first and foremost, like something that's unique. Yeah. That would be a bit tough to do, but mm -hmm. might have a few ideas. I mean, there's still good ideas out there, definitely. Like, I think some of the best video games, of course, like, I mean, even the our simple ones, too. Like, there's one, I think it's Unturned. That was created by, like, a 16-year-old kid who played Roblox before. It's basically like a DayZ, but with more, like, cartoonish graphics, with more, like, Lego-type graphics. That came a very popular game. I think it only costs, like, a dollar. Might even be free to play. Of course, there's like skins and stuff you can buy. It's sort of the money comes in. But honestly, like simple ideas like that, and even ideas that are popular, I mean, as long as you add your own unique spin to them and make something that's actually like good and playable, then I mean, usually it'll probably be a success overall. Yeah. Like there's a million survival games out there, but really the ones that stand out are the ones who have like the most unique features, the ones that have like awesome base building, stuff like that. So an idea that's not new, but something that's like mastered specifically in the game. Yeah. I think the same can also be said for a lot of games set in the second, in like the second world war time frame. There's been a lot of games like that over the years, but only a few have really sort of been able to, uh, I guess really do it justice. Right. More of the game, it feels like more and more of the games set in like a historical setting are kind of butchering the whole concept of a World War II shooter. <clears throat> Vanguard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think that about wraps up the episode. Thank you, Jared. All right, yep, yeah, so about 30. All right, well, it's going to be, I guess well, this type of format will be a bit of a shorter episodes as well. Again, uh, please leave feedback, please leave comments if you actually like this type of format. I assume we're probably going to have more dedicated things to talk about with these kind of casual talks. So this is kind of a good test run. So leave feedback if you actually like this stuff, if you want to hear more or see more of this type of format. I'll again leave polls and everything else on our YouTube and Spotify or if you just want us to talk about the old stuff or go back to the old format, that is fine as well. So again, make sure to leave a like, subscribe on the YouTube channel um, and leave money on Patreon and make sure to share and favorite as well and join our Discord. And, 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 fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will see you guys in the next episode.